Hi, I'm Dr. Billy Wu, and in this video, we'll be talking about teaching methods and reflecting on different ways we might deliver education in the modern day. The hope is that this might help educators seed ideas for structuring their content or just provide perspective to students about what goes into designing teaching content. Firstly, a few words about context. Traditional approaches for delivering content through lectures in large lecture theatres have worked well for many years. However, with the advent of increasing digitalization, there's an opportunity to innovate in the way that we deliver information, which is more inclusive and promotes critical thinking skills. Now, before starting, it's useful to consider what general framework you'd like to take. This can broadly be categorized into three different themes. In the first instance, curriculum as content views the program of study as a body of knowledge that is transmitted from the teacher to the students. In the second instance, there's also frameworks which view the curriculum as a product where the focus is to achieve a certain end goal with the students, for example, equip them with certain skills and capabilities. And finally, there's a view that the curriculum can be viewed as a process, whereby the focus is on the interactions of the teachers, students, and knowledge. And this has been the general direction of travel for the last few years. In this respect, developing communities of learning, encouraging legitimate participation, and developing the student's ability to handle ambiguity are key pillars to an effective and enjoyable learning experience. Delivery modes which support this are shown here, where didactic-based lectures are broadly rooted in the curriculum as a content model. Socratic methods promote broader team and group working skills. On the other hand, facilitative and experiential-based learning are much more a part of the curriculum as a process theme. In reality though, there's a place for each of these types of delivery as the learning process builds the student's ability to create new content. Learning objectives often have foundations in remembering and understanding key facts, which can be well supported by didactic lectures. However, problem-based learning and work-based learning are more well suited to facilitating the student's ability to analyze a problem, evaluate information and ideas, and ultimately create new solutions. Once you know what overarching style you want, the next step is to create a structure. Here, a useful framework is the three S's, sequencing, scaffolding, and spiraling. When sequencing, you're laying out the content in a structured order. When scaffolding, creating intended learning objectives is one of the core frameworks to effectively manage the expectations of the students. If, say, for example, you're delivering a first year module, this is the point where the students' expectations and your expectations of them are the most misaligned. Therefore, putting a bit more time into framing this and communicating this to the students is a very worthwhile task. And finally, revisiting or spiraling back to these core learning objectives is then useful for consolidating the learning. After this, we have to ask ourselves, what would we like the students to get after this course? This can be framed around the concept of constructive alignment, where we systematically ask questions to the teacher about what would we want the students to learn, which results in the learning objectives? Then we ask, how would they learn it, which informs the delivery mode? And then we have to ask ourselves, how do you know that they've learned it, which informs the assessment methods? In practice, there are new supporting tools constantly emerging, and this model often requires refinement over time. Therefore, having reflective periods to evaluate the teaching methods and update this is important for keeping the module relevant and engaging. When starting to sketch out your aims and intended learning objectives, one of the really useful conceptual frameworks is Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning. This starts with remembering and understanding type learning objectives, which is often the foundation of understanding a subject. Then this progresses to applying and analyzing type objectives where the aim is to get students to apply what they've learnt as well as be able to break down problems into their component parts. And finally, we have evaluate and create type learning objectives, where students can critically judge the value of information and combine parts to create new knowledge. 
scaffolding the student's learning from remembering and understanding key concepts towards higher level learning objectives around evaluating complex concepts and creating new ones is really a cornerstone of stretching and challenging students. So when writing intended learning objectives, using the words associated with each level of Bloom's taxonomy of learning can be a helpful guide for students to understand the rationale for what they're learning such that they'll be able to see the progress that they're making. Now, in traditional didactic lecture delivery, there's very little interaction between the teacher and the students. After a lecture is given, the students would normally digest this information and try and solve problems on their own, where very little support is provided. Alternatively, an emerging format is the flipped classroom. Here, short videos introducing core teaching concepts are provided to the students who are expected to watch these before the class. In place of the lectures, there are interactive classroom activities that focus on worked problems to encourage active engagement with the students. Part of the curriculum as a process model relies on creating communities of learning and facilitating peer learning between students as one important aspect of the educational experience. In the case of videos I've made, I've tried to keep these short to about 10 minutes. Now, these flipped classroom sessions are meant to be interactive and require the teacher to react to knowledge gaps in the students, but this can often be challenging in large classes. However, there are a number of tools which can help facilitate this live feedback. One of my favorites is Mentimeter, where you can pose a number of questions and get instant feedback which might highlight elements where the students didn't quite understand and you can go back and revisit these concepts. Also, Mentimeter can be used to provide students a platform to ask questions anonymously, which is really useful as sometimes students are worried about asking questions that are linked back to them. So, to conclude, the educational landscape is changing with an increased use of technology and with this change, there's an opportunity to rethink the curriculum. Didactic lectures do have value. However, they can also be enhanced with group working, problem-based learning and work-based learning. The three S's are a great way for framing the learning by sequencing the content, scaffolding it with intended learning objectives and spiraling to revisit concepts. Use of constructive alignment can also be really useful to ask ourselves the question, of what do we want the students to learn, how will they learn it, and how will we know that they've learnt it well. Frameworks such as Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning are a great way to consider the hierarchy of learning, where the aim is to transition from foundational objectives of remembering and understanding towards the ability to critically evaluate and create new content. Approaches such as the flipped classroom have the potential to utilize technology to really enhance the student experience. And tools such as Mentimeter are great for assessing whether students have fully understood the content, as well as providing a platform for anonymized questions. So thank you for listening, and hopefully the content in this talk has been useful for reflecting on the different ways we can deliver teaching to students. Ultimately, this is an evolving landscape and we should be agile towards new opportunities to innovate with our teaching.